All right, so let me share the screen. Okay, so as you know, every day, the first 10 minutes, we are gonna dedicate them to make a quick recapitulation of what we did the previous day and some reminders that I'm sure you are already bored of listening too, but we feel of light. So if you remember correctly, yesterday we were working on configuring the server. We analyzed what is the metadata package we're using that we have adapted the COVID-19 model, so trending nowadays. And we have prepared our device so we can, we can work on the next exercises that we'll have today and tomorrow on the day after. So you have been asked to submit an exercise. We will see later on some numbers on that. So let us remind you that we're gonna have question and answer sessions every day from nine to 10. Thank you all that came this morning. We usually have also in the afternoon at the last hour, so from one to two, but today is not happening because we will have the chance to listen to the Ghana Health Service who will be talking about their implementation in the country. I think Kwame will be here. Uh, I need to, but yeah, uh, it's gonna be uh, at one if I'm correct. I'm gonna show the, the agenda now. And another reminder, please make sure you fill the attendance every day when you log in into the Academy site. There is a check. I think you have to display attendance. Yes, please make so. Alice is gonna remind you every time she has a chance. It is really important. It counts for 10% of your grade. So please do, please do that every day. Also, some of you feel, feel it in the form of feedback that is presented in, in the academy site every day. That is really valuable information for us. So please do that every day after the sessions. Feel free to add comments. It's anonymous, so we cannot see. If you need to tell us some bad things, it's OK. We really, really appreciate that. It makes us improve. And I think so far only one person has registered for the presentation on Friday. If you know on Friday from 10 to 11.20, we are gonna have a space dedicated for you where you should present your implementation, your projects, what are you doing? And in case you wanna do this, please reach any of us and we'll make sure we allocate you a, a space there. Some statistics. So this was initially prepared to show the activity in the community, but in the end, because we're using a Slack, it's been really active. So thank you very much for that. And in terms of exercises, we have received out of the 83 people that attend yesterday, so they check in the academy side, 42. So it's halfway. Please do not drag on them, try to do them when we finish the session or enjoy the, the, the hour we have in the morning for us to help you because we're gonna keep adding more and more exercises. And if you're not finishing the one before, I think you might struggle with the ones we'll be presenting today and then the ones from tomorrow. So do not hesitate to come to us during the sessions so we can help you finish the exercises. I don't know if there are some questions we're going to be checking. I cannot check, unfortunately, the, the, the Slack, but I'm sure the other facilitators are doing. So in case you have some questions, and if not, I'm going to present the agenda we have for today. That is this one. So currently, we're in the second row. And now we're going to have half an hour of program rules. Again, we're going to be following the same structure as yesterday, a bit of theory at the beginning. And then uh, the exercise will give you probably not enough time for you to finish them, but you can enjoy the sessions afterwards or do them after during the evening or in the afternoon, whenever you are, and then come back to us the next day. Again, session, little break, session, little break. Visual configurations will be the same. A bit of theory, exercise, a little break, visual data entry and exercise, a break. And there you will see that we have 45 minutes where we will have a lot of facilitators. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make smaller rooms in Zoom 
like 10 people, a bit less maybe, will be allocated in each room. And we will have one facilitator in each room. So in this exercise, we're going to be trying to give you support really one-on-one, -on -one, simulating like if we were in a real academy, in real life, I mean, not digital. And we will be going to your table, asking you questions, what's going on, what are the issues you're having with the exercises. So ideally, you should use that 45 minutes to finish all the exercises you have pending. And then we're going to have the, um, the kind of health services presenting their, their deployment. Uh, followed by the expert lads where Dominique or other colleagues will be taking your questions. Can I, sorry, Jaime, can I jump in here quickly? Absolutely. <laughs> so hi everyone, just to let you know that uh, as Raime had said, um, Ghana Health Service will do a presentation on the TB deployment in Ghana and uh, the HIV deployment as well. So it will be a 30 minutes um, presentation. Then following this presentation from 1.30 to 2.30, um, they accepted to be the main facilitator of our experts lounge. So for those who have never tried the experts lounge, it's a very interesting session. It's a basically a one hour session where um, Oswald and Kwame from GHS will be available and they will be available not only to, uh, to answer your questions related to the presentation, but also if you are based in um, West Africa, Central Africa, and you want to get some tips from experts on your own implementation and your own projects, they will be available to, uh, to reply to these questions. So what will happen is that we have a channel on Slack. I'm sure you already saw it. It's called uh, Experts Lounge from Africa. And I invite each of you from now actually to already start asking questions there. So basically uh, the team from, uh, from Ghana Health Service will read the questions that you, you, you raised on the Experts Lounge for Africa and they will reply to them live on Zoom. So you are also invited to, uh, to, to join this session from 1.30 to 2.30. 30, but once again, any question you may have, uh, we encourage you to ask them directly on Slack on the Expert Lounge for Africa channel. And also, it's our great pleasure to let you know that the same format will be available for Asia continent. So if you are based in Asia and you, you want to have some tips, ask questions to experts based in Asia as well, Pamoda Marakun, who is um, one of the lead from his Sri Lanka will be available on Friday uh, morning, morning for us at least, from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. CET. But we will let you know once uh, the Slack channel will be ready so that you, you will be able to start asking questions to Pamod uh, before Friday. That's it. Thank you so much. And we're looking, for you to, um, we're looking forward to see you during this expert lounge today. Thank you. Thank you, Alice. Thank you very much. OK, thank you. Uh, someone has just replied on, on, on Slack. I think it's Abdul. I'm sorry, I didn't have the chance. It was really quick. Um, OK. Um, Marta, could you share the screen with the presentation? Because for me, it's a bit complicated with only one screen. I was about to ask you that on a private message. Yes, one second. Uh, Jaime, if you can, if if you can say next slide when you want to see the next slide. So I try to read your silence, but uh, sometimes. Okay, okay, I'll do that. I'll do, I'll do that. Okay, so thank you very much, everyone, for being here. I am gonna give a session on problem rules.
So we're 67, I think it's a good number. Good. So next slide, please, Marta. So this uh, session, it's gonna last 30 minutes. And I, as I was explaining, 15 minutes of really quick theory and 15 minutes of uh, exercise where we will give you time, we'll explain the exercise and we expect you to do the exercise. If you have no time, no worries, you can always come back to the question and answer sessions. So by the end of the session, the participants should know what program rules are, how to use them and how to set them up. Even though we consider that you already know about program rules, we're gonna be giving a crash course because this academy is not focusing on this, but we want to make a quick refreshment. And then what we would like to stress is a bit the difference between the Android and the web version. So whenever you define or you design a DHIS2 implementation, you will need to know that if you're targeting mobile, you should use one kind of program rules. If you're using web, you should use another one. But there is a way in case you're going to be using both to have program rules that are compatible with both systems. And this is what we're going to be trying to cover here really quickly. And we're going to be adding references for you to check later, because unfortunately, in 15 minutes, we cannot make a full course of program rules. So next slide. Um, here, just to wake you up a little bit, I'm going to give you 30 seconds to think in these two scenarios, what would you do? So wake your brain up and try to think what happens with the phone there and what happens with the traffic light there. Okay, so in real, uh, in a class, I would ask you and I would ask you to raise a hand and let me know what are you thinking, but uh, it's not time. So I hope you thought a little bit about it. And what happens is that basically, next slide, please. You are evaluating a situation and you're performing an action. So in the first, in the left side with the phone, you're saying, okay, my phone is running out of battery. So I'm gonna connect the charger. On the right side, you have seen a traffic light, which is red. Sorry if they're colorblind, but the upper one is red. So it means I have to stop. Evaluation and action. These are the key concepts that we need to think about when designing program rules. Next. So this principle is implementing DHIS2 via the program rules. So we evaluate the current state of the data entry and we respond with a series of effects. Again, um, think always like what happens at this moment, what I want to produce, the outcome. And what happens, we can define by the input. So in the middle column here and the context because the context can also affect the way I'm, I'm treating this evaluation before performing the action. So before I was talking about traffic lights, I was talking about uh, devices, but now if we go to a real scenario, so a DHS to a real example, we could say, for example, I would like to have a proven rule that calculates the score of the facility based on some checks. Imagine we have an entry form, we check things and I want at the end to get a score. This is a program rule because we're evaluating something and we're performing an action. The same could be the second one that has maybe more sense for you. If the user that is entering data has selected male, I want to hide the pregnancy status in the form. Doesn't make sense that I have the pregnancy if the patient is a male. We could also leave it, but in order to help the data encoder or the person in entering the data on the phone, this is something that could be helpful. And the next one, for example, if the patient, patient has hemoglobin really low, show a warning to the nurse. In the document we provided you yesterday, you will see that there are some uh, the program rules that are covered in this, in this program. So feel free to go there. Thanks, Marta, next slide. So when we talk about program rules, we're gonna divide this mystical concept into three items that we'll be working on and we're gonna explain really quickly. But the first one is the rule variable, the rule expression and the rule actions. So again, evaluation and action. And I have put you here above 
if the patient has hemoglobin really low, show warning to the nurse. If you think in the first part of the sentence, the one that is underlined in reddish, if the patient has hemoglobin really low, this is the evaluation. And then we perform an action, which is show a warning to the nurse. If you see here, we have the hemoglobin that I have linked, and it's a rule variable because it's something we are evaluating. So we'll see now what is a rule variable. I, I, I'm going to set, I have a set of slides here, four or five, I think, which says reference on the title. This means that I'm going to be going through them really, really quickly because we don't have the time. But it's for you to have them. And in case you want to come back to them later on, or in case you need to give a training, you will always have them. So go a bit before, yeah, bit, no, go a bit before, Marta. Yeah, I'm going to, yes, yeah. Because I'm going to explain it. So just really quickly, we have from row variables, hemoglobin in our real example. Uh, in the traffic light would be red because my LED, my light is red. So the from row variables, basically what they do is they capture um, a value from one of these things that I have included here. So it could be a data element from this event, a calculate, a uh, track identity attribute that someone was asking this morning in Slack. And the last one, which is here, calculated value. This is in case you need to operate with a value that is not directly taken from the data entry, but it's something you're computing. In the first real BHIS2 example, I told you, give me a score according to the number of checks. So I am adding this check, so I will create a prom rule variable that counts the number of checks. Okay, next. So in order to define prom rule variables, you will need to go to the maintenance program and prom rule variables. And there you will fill this information. When you define a prom rule variable, you need to put in a program that is gonna be used, in which prom will be used. You need to put the name and then the source type, which makes reference to the previous slide. So basically we're gonna be defining it if it comes from a data element, from an attribute, or it's a calculated value as I explained. Again, if we go back to the real examples in life, so my traffic light is red in this sense. I'm taking, uh, I would put program traffic, the name would be um, led of the traffic light and the data element is the one that is the light, okay? In DHIS2, we'll see now. So next one. Now, if we go back to the three circles, we were talking about um the pro rule has these three bubbles let's say and one is going to be the evaluation and one is going to be the action these things you are going to define them in the maintenance program and pro rules don't worry you're going to be seeing this and in the exercise we are asking you to do you will have to perform this task we're giving you some help afterwards so uh when you go to the maintenance program from a rule, you will see there, you have to fill in the first uh, list. You can put some details of the program rule. You can put the name, so the program, in case you want to limit it to the stage, some inf additional information, and then the priority. The priority, not fully covered here, but just for you to know that whenever you are having several program rules and you need some of them to be executed before the other ones, you need to use this priority. If I go back to the example of the checks and calculating the score, we will need to make sure that we are checking these things before we can compute. Okay, so in these terms, we will need to use the priority. So mark the next, please. The second thing we need to define is the evaluation. Again, if my traffic light is red, if my phone has no battery, if the hemoglobin is low. So we are trying to evaluate something um, that needs to give us a true or false statement. If we don't get a true or false, it's something that we are not properly defining the expression. So in this case, if hemoglobin is low, we have defined what low is because we, we have our medical, um, uh, we we'll have our medical requirements. We know what is low, what is high, but we could not say, we, we need to know what we have defined as yes or no. So in the traffic light, 
is it red? Yes or no? You could tell me, yeah, but if it's orange, well, if it's orange, it is not red. Um, next, please. So as a reference, these are the things that you can use in Android. We will see later on a chart summarizing everything. So I'm not gonna go through them. Next, please. And last part of the PRON rule. So we have defined a bit the details of the PRON rule. Then we have evaluated, we have defined the expression we want to be evaluated. And then we have the action. Evaluation, we have only one. It's true or, 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 or false. And the last one is the actions. And we could have several actions because we can perform several actions in the traffic like a stop, a drink, a whatever. In a mob mobile, we're showing a message to the nurse, but we could compute several actions. In this case, you will define them here. And please, next slide. These are the available actions you have in Android. As you will see, Pretty much everything it's covered except the last one that we will cover really, uh, I mean, on, we'll go through it uh, really slightly on day four, I think. But just for you to know that these are the actions that you could trigger according to uh, an evaluation. So for example, you could assign something, you could show a message, etc. So this is the, 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 the chart that you should memorize, kind of, or at least half as a reference. But basically, it's important that you know that the PRON rules, so this concept that I have explained in 10 minutes, um, might be a bit, I know it's a bit quick, but if you already knew, I hope it's a refreshment and, and you, it brings back to your brain what we're talking about. It's important to know that the PRON rules are computed in a different way in web and in Android. And in the near future, this will not be necessary because we'll be using the same rule engine. But at the moment, it is not the case. So when you are designing a program that it needs to be used in the web and in Android version, you should check this link that we have here, the front rule support in Android Capture App, where we have collected the main discrepancies. So when you go and you design the program or, or, or your system, you know what is important to, to how to adapt rules so are they compatible in both systems. Okay, there are some questions popping up. I will reply to them, sorry, when I when we finish this. So let's create a prone rule. So that was the theory. I know we said it was a crash course and I hope it was at least to bring you a bit of, sorry, message, okay. Um, to bring back to your brain what a problem rules are. And now we're gonna see what are we asking you in the exercise. So if we go to the next slide, set of slides, which is two, two yeah, yes, exercise yes. problem mm -hmm. rules. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no worries. I would recommend that you all download these slides so you have them in mm -hmm. your DHIS2 folder. So whenever you need to explain this to some people or whenever you need to go back because you're designing your system, have them as a set of resources that you can have. Okay, so in the exercise, Marta, go two slides ahead, please. Yeah, so this is the introduction. Uh, in the program that you are using, that you ex that you work on yesterday, there is a well a new data a new temperature data element in the phase one symptoms has been added. It should be hidden if there are no symptoms or the fever is no, and this has already been implemented. However, if the fever is yes, the temperature should be verified to avoid discrepancies. So what we are asking you, and don't worry, we're coming with a little bit more help down. But the student, you are supposed to make a prone rule that in case of registering fever, if the temperature value is lower than 37, an error should be displayed because this is an impossible state. I'm gonna roll back and explain that quickly again. I am someone who's encoding with the phone because a COVID patient has just arrived and I have measured his or her temperature and I have marked that this person uh, 
uh, and I, I, am, I have checked the temperature of this person and I have decided that he or she has fever. So in my, in my program, in the Android device, I'm putting fever, yes. Whenever I check fever, yes, a box underneath is gonna be displayed that asks me for the temperature of the fever. So there I can put, and this has already been for you. It's, it's already there. But in this box, if I put, for example, 32 degrees, which is really low and it's not fever, the, the program should display a message saying, this is wrong because you have told me that fever, yes, and we know that fever is above 37. And you're telling me now that the fever is 32 degrees Celsius. So this is not possible. So you are supposed to implement a program rule that avoids the user being able to reach this stage. Marta, if you go to the next slide, please. We're gonna see that this is what we're asking you. On the left side, you're gonna be seeing what you have currently in your program. And on the right side, you have what we're asking you. If you see on the left side, the data encoder has put fever yes, but the temperature 23. This is a mistake. So on the right side, you are supposed to have fever yes, and now you see it's 35, it's still under 37. So this is incorrect still, and a message is displayed. Please make sure the measure tape is correct. So, um, what we're gonna ask you is to verify that your program rules is correct. The variables, the program rule variables, sorry. And you have to define the program rule, the three stages we talk about, details, the program rule expression, and the program rule actions. In the next two, three slides, you have a help, a big help actually, where you can see what you're supposed to do. But Marta, if you can go next quickly, we can explain. Here you can check the program rule variable, which is called temperature. Please make sure that this is there already. It should be. Check a bit late to see what is going on in, with this with this variable. And the next slide is basically what we're expecting you to do. If you see here, we have three slides, three three images. One is the definition of the program rule. The second is the expression, and the third one is the action. So this is what we need you to implement. I think you have now like 17 minutes. No, sorry, 13 minutes. So please work on it and we're gonna be here to help you. Thank you very much. I know it was quick, but I hope it was enough for you to get rolling.